Hey, everybody, and happy Friday. Welcome to the FYI podcast, where we talk about faith, life, adulting, relationships, finances, and so much more. The reason why we exist is to reach the 18 to 30 year old who's asking questions, who's wrestling down faith, who's maybe experiencing things in life that they don't have anybody to ask these questions to. So we exist because you guys are asking questions and we are just two willing people to take a jab at it. So my name is Micah. If you don't know us, I'm one of the hosts and here is my husband. I'm Josiah. I'm the other host and we love this journey, babe. What's your favorite part about doing an FYI podcast? Oh my gosh. I think it's hearing from the young adults and their questions, but also hearing like what they're learning in the process of their relationship with people or the, like the relationship with God, or I don't know. It's just funny to hear the testimonies and to see that people are asking amazing questions. And we just want to be a place to know that it's safe to ask us questions. We're going to be as real and raw as we can be and authentic, but also point you to the word of God, which is truth. And oh, hopefully it's answering some of the questions that are prompting your heart or nudging your heart and directions of life, because we're all up against decisions. We're all up against transitions in multiple ways, whether you're 18 or 30 or beyond listening to this podcast. It's life is a constant transition and not every day is the same, nor should it be. So we're here to make your end your week strong and hopefully begin your weekend even stronger. And we have an amazing question here today that I think many people are probably wondering, asking, um, trying to create room or space for, and just truly, really trying to slow down when it comes to everyday living. So Take a deep breath, enjoy the ride. We're going to see where this question goes. And here's the question of the day. It's going to be on Mm -hmm. faith. And so if you know somebody who needs a a, kind of a faith me up, they need to pick me up in their life. If they're maybe doubting or they've deconstructed or they're just wrestling through faith, um, maybe they're bored or you just know a young adult in your life, Mm -hmm. please share this message with them. We know that it'll leave them encouraged and inspired and filled with hope. And uh, the question today came from a DM that said, what does it look like to walk with the Holy Spirit for daily living? Mm. What, does it, what does it mean to be led by the Holy Spirit? Like this person's asking us like every day, mm-hmm. what does it look like to walk with the Holy Spirit for daily living? Yeah. And I'll just share uh, the verse of the day. Sure. Um, is the first one is, it comes from Acts 1, 4, and I'll pull it up. Got it right here in front of me, book of Acts chapter one and verse four. It just says this on one occasion, Jesus was eating with the disciples. He gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift. My father promised, which you've heard me speak about. It goes on verse five and six say for John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked Lord, are you at this time going to restore the the kingdom to Israel? Because Mm -hmm. they thought he was going to be a political leader. They thought he was going to be Mm -hmm. taking over the government and reign and authority Mm -hmm. on earth, on earth. And he said to them, it is not for you to know the times or the dates the father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Mm -hmm. That's acts one, eight, I read acts one, four through eight. And babe, I'd love to ask you this question. When was a time that you felt a whisper, a nudge, kind of a prompting, or maybe that still small voice, um, to be led by the Holy spirit? Oh, I think multiple times in my day and life. (laughs) Um, it's, it's just a matter of, are we willing to respond to it? I think more or less. So even before I answer that question for the person who does not understand elements of the Holy spirit or the promptings of the Holy spirit, I would just say a prompting from the Holy spirit, at least in like the cartoon world is like that angel. And then like the devil on your shoulder, you know, like one saying something good, one saying something bad. And I would say just like how the Holy spirit works and might feel like that prompting or that conviction of like, your heart's like, Oh, I don't know if that's right. Or maybe this isn't the proper decision, or maybe not now, like Mm -hmm. even those small, like promptings in your spirit that make you stop, pause, and really consider what you're thinking. And I think 
those can be small promptings of the Holy spirit. It's like this conviction. It's like a conviction is a positive thing. A convictions protect convictions, direct convictions, help steer your life in directions that they should go in the directions that they shouldn't go. So it's like a warning sign. So that's a conviction is like a little warning or a positive prompting to do something good beyond yourself. So I don't know if that helps create like a little bit of a visual. Um, but I'd say one of the most pivotal moments I think I had is actually, I was at a young adult event in this upper room where there was worship. And I just felt this prompting in my spirit. I felt like somebody whispered to my soul, not to my ears, but to my heart of just like, Micah, you were designed to reach a generation and it starts here. And, it, and for me in that moment, I was like, what does this mean? Am I blah, blah, blah. like your mind just runs wild. And I'm like, okay, it starts here. Okay, Lord, by the end of tonight and this retreat that I'm a part of, what do you want to direct and download in my heart and what needs to take place? Because a lot of the times when we have those promptings, maybe more like mine, is this my thought? Is this the, is this like a distraction from the enemy? Wait, I, I think it's totally is natural. Is this the Holy Spirit? Exactly. So, it's totally natural when hearing from God to ask the question, was this me? or was this God? Yeah. And I think, and, and it's, I think it's a healthy question. Cause I think then we take it to the Lord in prayer even more. I'm just like, okay, Lord, this is what I felt, whether it's you or something else. Um, teach me how to respond to it. Yeah. And confirm it. Yeah. So Bless he can, this or block it and, yeah. and then go to the word. Like, does this align yeah. with scripture? Yeah. So I think God can use the Holy spirit to prompt to our hearts. He can use confirmation or affirm what's been spoken to or from a stranger they might not know of. Like I was just with a friend today and she's in a transitional moment of her life. And she's like, Micah, you are the second person to ask me that question. So she's like, this is just confirming more in her heart of like, what do I need to consider in the transition that she's potentially stepping into? And that that's what I think it was for me. It's like, okay, I felt this probably, okay, I'm called to a generation. Mm-hmm. And so I took an inventory right there. I was like, I'm a part of young adult ministry. I'm on staff at a church. I'm interning uh, beyond that Lord, while I'm finishing this internship for the next X amount of months, show me what that is and means. So I think anytime we have something in our heart or mind, we can remind God of what he's spoken in his word and we can bring forth what we felt in our heart. And if they both align and they both like come alongside each other, that's generally a prompting from the Holy spirit. And it can be pivotal transitions of life. It can be directions sometimes of like, I don't think I should drive home this way. I've had that too. And then I found out there's a major accident. I was like, oh my gosh, could I have been a part of that accident? I don't know, but I felt like I was supposed to take this route over the other. So you don't want to think that there's the Holy Spirit under every rock and stone. Like some people, you know, act like the devil's under every rock and stone, but really understanding that there are promptings and nudgings that happen throughout the day. It's whether or not we're going to recognize them Mm -hmm. um, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ. So yeah, I know that's helpful for the listener or not, but (laughs) amazing. There is that saying, and you just reminded me of it where sometimes you you might hear about a person and they're described as so heavenly minded that they're of no earthly good. <laughs> and I mean, it's kind of an insulting or shocking statement, but I remember one time in college because God gives us wisdom. Right. And we live in Minnesota and I did it as well in college. And I remember somebody called me from out of state who was a student in, in this area in college. And I remember that they had just like, said, well, I'm, I don't know if I should drive right now. And I was like, I'm not on the road. We canceled our small group tonight because nobody should be driving. Mm-hmm. We were getting like a foot or two of snow and it was going to be a major s- snowstorm. You don't want to be caught in the middle of it. And wisdom would tell you like, don't go out. Mm-hmm. And uh, the person was like, okay, I, if this light turns green, then I'm going to go. But if it stays red, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, then I'm going to know that I should go back home. And I was just like, okay, it's kind of like the Holy spirit. Yeah. I love that you brought that up. Is there a demon under every rock? Okay. It doesn't mean that you can't ask questions or leave every stone unturned. Right. But I think that we want to, we don't want to over spiritualize things, but there's a danger in under spiritualizing things. We invite God into our homework. We invite Mm -hmm. God into our work. Yeah. Um, with it, I'll say this about the acts chapter that we were talking about the beginning of the acts of the apostles Mm -hmm. jesus resurrection and ascension Mm -hmm. is intricately intricately connected 
it's inseparable from the mm. outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Jesus' resurrection on the, after the cross and then his ascension into heaven, it's because God will never leave you alone. Mm. You are never alone. Mm -hmm. That's the message today yeah. is that Jesus was here on earth as a human. He lived. And when Jesus was going to return to the father, he knew, and he's telling us, don't leave Jerusalem without the Holy spirit, because he wanted God to be present with us. One of the names of God is Emmanuel, God with us. Mm -hmm. And the Holy spirit is that personified God, the mm -hmm. father, God, the son, God, the Holy spirit. So the message is that you are never alone. Mm -hmm. God will not forsake you. Mm -hmm. He will not abandon you. You're not alone. So what does it look like to invite God into every daily life? Mm -hmm. It's not just the mountaintops. It's not just the valley lows. Right. It's the mundane in between. And it's the miraculous. It's yeah. the majestic. It's the mysterious. And um, Well, I think because we forget there's a word that's used for the Holy Spirit, and that is advocate. Yes. I will send an advocate in my place. So even when Jesus was walking this earth, I'm going to send somebody, the Holy yep. Spirit is what he was referring to in that, to advocate for you. So throughout the entire day, um, somebody's advocating for you. It's the Holy Spirit trying to prompt your heart. And the um, Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father, interceding on your behalf when you're praying. So there's an intercessory happening through prayer. There's an advocate who's mm -hmm. trying to get our, capture our attention, advocating for us and, and spirit, like um, spearheading things in our hearts and spurring us on in the process, which should be soothing to our soul. Even if we do feel like we're physically alone, there are still elements of the Holy spirit moving and God wanting to speak and Jesus interceding on our behalf. So just kind of keeping those elements in mind, I think is fun to think about. And Acts 1-4 is, is written about saying, don't leave Jerusalem without the Holy Spirit. Don't leave. Mm -hmm. Don't go. I think that verse could apply to every single day of your life. Don't leave mm. your dorm without the Holy Spirit. Don't go to work without the Holy Spirit. Don't mm -hmm. get in the car. Don't leave your house. Don't leave your community. Don't mm. leave your city. Don't go to work. Don't go do ministry. Don't go to your small group. Don't leave without the power of God in the Holy Spirit. And what I really want to talk about with this podcast or on this message in this episode is why aren't we led by the Holy Spirit? That's a great question. I think there's two really powerful reasons that we're not led by the Holy Spirit. Number one is plain old busyness. And number two is we're far too easily pleased. Hmm. What I mean is busyness. Like if I look at my personal life and I would imagine your life is at least a little bit like mine, mm -hmm. where your day gets going and you can get carried away and you can get distracted. Mm -hmm. There can be a lot of, sometimes we use the phrase buzzing, ringing, dinging to talk about our phones and before you know it your friend called and before you know it you're looking for a new client or before you know mm -hmm. it, the work day it's like where did the time go right and we've overcommitted we're overworked we're overbooked overscheduled and the thing with busyness i love what dallas willard says about it the great enemy of spiritual life is hurry Mm -hmm. Dallas Willard wrote that hurry is the greatest enemy of our spiritual life. In other words, why we're not led by the Holy Spirit is we're busy. And I think of mm -hmm. um, our life sometimes is busy. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's not even a ton of commitments. It's the primary commitments are so intense of parenting mm -hmm. or mm -hmm leading a ministry that, and, and then, so what do we do? Dallas Willard said this about hurry and busyness. He said, you must ruthlessly eliminate hurry from your life. And I would just pause and highly recommend the book, the ruthless elimination mm -hmm. of hurry by John Mark Comer. Yeah. If you're looking for a great summer read. Um, but the first reason that we're not led by the Holy spirit more is when we're busy. Jesus is, is like that in um, the old testament <clears throat> there was a wind that came he wasn't in the mighty rushing he wasn't in the storm he he was in the whisper mm -hmm. and i think if you're looking for that still small voice if you're too busy um it's really easy to to miss 
that voice of God. If it's too loud, Mm -hmm. maybe even your environment. The second reason is we're far too easily pleased. I screenshotted this quote that I'm going to read from C.S. Lewis. And I thought what he said, I just was like, wow. He says of pleasure and delight, he says that it would seem that our Lord finds our desires not too strong, but actually too weak. We are half-hearted creatures fooling about with drink and sex and ambition when infinite joy is offered to us like an ignorant child who wants Mm. to go on making mud pies in a slum because he cannot imagine what is meant by the offer of a holiday at the sea. We are far too easily pleased. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's dead on. Wow, that's a strong quote to really just chew on there and to really just realize even just the first part with Josiah was talking about busy. I think busyness is the biggest distraction the enemy can put in front of us is busyness. And when we think about busyness, busyness always isn't meaning that you're even being productive. I was, I was hoping you'd say that. I just think it's so, I think you're like, how are you? We're busy. Okay. Busyness does not mean production. (laughs) Mm -hmm. It can mean that you've been scrolling you got lost in TikTok for six hours and you're like, oh my gosh, it's three in the morning. Like I can't even like, I don't even, I, I don't even know what to Where do. Where did the time go? And I think that's what, when the Bible talks about, when we talk about busyness, like what you put on your calendar gets done mm-hmm. and what you don't get put on your calendar gets hijacked. And I would say, that's why I think the word of God says, let your yes be yes and your no be no. And to let your yeses be kingdom minded and let your no's be the things that fall to the wayside that are the time wasters. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't work hard to get where God wants you to go, because there's going to be some things you might not want to do, but I'm talking about just eliminating the things that don't matter more or less the the things that you're buying the the things that are owning you or do you own them so just even taking personal inventory of your busyness and the buzz and ringing and dinging aspect that you talked about Josiah I think is when you wake up in the morning what's the first thing you turn to I think that's a great question even just to answer or ask yourself right now in this moment is what is the first thing I turn to when I wake Mm -hmm. up Mm mm-hmm it can be your phone because your alarm's going off, but then you get scrolling. It could be a workout because you got to get to the gym to get to the, onto the rest of your day. It could be the coffee pot. It could be your kids getting up at four five, six in the morning, ready to, you know, take on the day. It could be your spouse that's consuming your time. It could be your own procrastination that is causing you to wake up and turn to the list of to-dos. But what it should be and could be is truly we should be opening the word of God to understand the will of God, to be in tune with the Holy Spirit and dedicating your calendar day to him every single morning that you wake up. Okay, Lord, this is your day. What do you want to do? Here's my list, (laughs) whether it's going to get done or not. I don't know. But I think when there's, there's power of invitation, not only to the person down the street or in your dorm or in your workspace, the power of invitation for the Holy Spirit to intervene on your behalf and to intercede or to strategically place individuals in front of you. But when we're too busy to see the people in front of us, we're too busy to respond to the things that matter. So I think even just looking at busyness as what do I need to prioritize? Where do I need to grow? If I am unhealthy in the fitness world, I should probably get to the gym and prioritize that. If I'm weak in the spiritual department, I should probably get into the word of God. And that should be an everyday thing. So it's not like you just go to the gym once and you're set for the rest of your life, just like the word of God and just like the spiritual principles that the Holy Spirit has to offer. Um, They need to be exercised every single day. You need to be fed every single day. You need to be exercising and wrestling with those and coming out stronger by the end of the day, because there's things that God can download at the beginning of the day that are going to set the rest of your day up for success. I'm very much a devotional person, like in the morning, because that's when I'm like, okay, praise God that I prayed today. And I did my devotion. Cause if I didn't, I don't know how I would respond to that, to, mm-hmm. to that situation mm-hmm. probably would have not been very godly. And I guess this is a challenge that I have for the listener today and myself each and every single day. It's like, what am I prioritizing and how do I invite the Holy Spirit in? This is what you say. Okay, Lord, this is the day that you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And you know what? I'm going to give you the day. I'm going to give you my calendar. Interrupt it however you want. We naturally have the bones and the structures to our day, right? We're going to go to work. We're going to school. We're going to do this X, Y, and Z. You have like your big rocks, um, but the small pebbles and the sand, God starts filling in the cracks of the Holy Spirit promptings. 
that flat tire that you helped somebody mm-hmm. fill on the side of the road, mm-hmm. that classmate that had a breakdown and you were able to pray for them or sit with them at lunch or encourage somebody along the way. Holy Spirit com- Holy Spirit downloads or interactions with him don't need to be an, a- an earth shattering moment. It can be something so simple, so small. Hey, I bought the office coffee and donuts this morning. Just want to say I love and appreciate you guys. The Holy Spirit can prompt silly things like that because a donut and coffee may mean something to that mom who had to get out the door with her four kids and didn't get fed herself. So, I mean, it can just be something so tiny. It doesn't have to be like, you're moving away and you're leaving everything. But to really be mindful that God is people, placing people in your life to encourage you and for you to also encourage. Well, and when I look at the life of Jesus in the gospels, is while he was on earth, many of the miracles, Mm -hmm. maybe even a majority of the miracles took place as interruptions, right? He was walking somewhere and a woman pushed through the crowd to just touch the robe of his garment. The woman with the issue of blood was then healed. Mm -hmm. And he says, where, who touched me Mm -hmm. in a crowded space, he was going and he met the woman at the well. Like, I think that, I wonder if the greatest spiritual activity that you could ever have this coming week mm. is to lay out your calendar pray over it. and to pray over it and to invite God into the planning process. God, is there anything that I should cancel? Mm-hmm. Lord, is there anything that I should add? Is mm-hmm. there anything that you want me to add or remove? And be a person of your word. If you made a commitment, then do it. Right. But does it need to be an ongoing activity? And I, I really wonder if if God couldn't just use that really powerfully. And if you're mm-hmm. looking for practical application of next steps, there's two theological terms that I'll unpack pretty quickly. Um, one would be um, a Pentecostal. The second would be a cessationist. And th- we believe, at least Mike and I do, in the gifts of the Holy Spirit that are written about in scripture, in Romans 12, in 1 Corinthians 12, Mm -hmm. we believe that they're for today. Mm -hmm. They began on the day of Pentecost when Jesus, Joel 2, Acts 2, he poured out his Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit are for today. And we would believe that the fruit of the Spirit written about in Galatians 5, Mm -hmm. 22 through 23 are for today. They begin with love. So Mm -hmm. the careful, the danger, Paul writes another chapter on love that you could be speaking with the tongues of men and angels and lacking love. And therefore you come across as a noising gong and a clanging Mm -hmm. symbol. And I surely see a lot of those on social media. Mm -hmm. And so the, the, the probably four markers of the Holy Spirit. How do you know if the Holy Spirit is active in your daily life? Number one, the gifts of the spirit are evident prophecy, mm-hmm. encouragement, um, administration, and a number of hospitality, a number of other spiritual gifts written about. And I just mentioned, you could find those in scripture. Um, the fruit of the spirit is evident as in Galatians. The third marker would be the boldness that accompanies the power mm-hmm. of the Holy spirit right. that we read about in acts one, eight, mm-hmm. that you'll be bold in to be a witness. And then the last one is love. Mm-hmm. I think those are four, four keys to know. And I remember we also believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. for today. And if you're seeking the baptism of the Holy Spirit, a lot of times it comes with accompanied with that gift is the gift of a prayer language mm-hmm. or speaking in tongues. And if you haven't received that gift, I'd encourage you to pray about it. Paul instructs the New Testament believers to eagerly seek the gifts of the Holy spirit. Mm -hmm. And I think that applies for today too. And I remember I was filled with the Holy spirit at summer camp Mm -hmm. going into sixth grade, received a prayer language that night and didn't know until I was 18 years old that that prayer language, the baptism of Holy spirit was a way that I could pray every day. Mm -hmm. And I'm thankful for almost a rebaptism in the Holy spirit that I was on a missions trip and we were going door to door in Belize sharing the gospel. We went to later who we found was a a known gang leader and drug dealer. Drug Lord. Mm -hmm. And my friend, Mike and goes, Josiah, you shared the gospel with him and he was on his bike and you stopped him and you asked him if he knew who Jesus (laughs) was. I've never seen you so bold. 
Well, mm. doesn't that sound like the boldness that would accompany through the power of the Holy Spirit talked about in Acts mm-hmm. 1 to be a witness? Yeah. So I think that all of it is what's it all for? It's to be a witness of the gospel of Jesus Christ, to share the gospel mm-hmm. daily anywhere and everywhere we go as we go and make disciples. And so there's a lot in that power packed episode, but feel free to send follow-up questions and we're praying for you. May this be a summer to dive into the book of Acts and to dive into a life that is lived in the power of the Holy Spirit. This is the FYI podcast.